2020 has been a brutal year for a lot of us and you know us dealing with Matthias going to heaven instead of coming home with us was a really rough way to end the year but our year started rough too. It kind of just seemed like one hit after the other and we kind of wanted to just touch base on that and let you guys know that you know what we've had moments of really intense sadness but we are fine. It is well with our soul and this is why because we are so grounded in the truth and God's love and his word that we can honestly say even in the midst of severe loss that um, our faith hasn't been shaken. We are still so confident that God is always faithful. You know, I heard someone say that, oh, Jesus needed Matthias more than us, so he took him. Or that, you know, life just happens or we don't know God is just mysterious. Well, that's obviously all just wrong because we have God's word and we know his will. And John 10, 10 makes it very clear that the thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. Anything that is trying to snuff your life out, destroy it or steal from it, then we know who's the enemy attacking. It's not Jesus. Jesus is the author of life and wants you to live it more abundantly. We kind of wanted to just tell you too a little bit about what actually happened. A lot of people have asked. Here's the thing. We got a report several months ago that there was a heart defect that and the best case scenario in the natural was that he would need open heart surgery almost to have his entire heart reconstructed it was not a good report so we did know that there was a problem going into um, the birth but we are a people of faith and I've said that before we were believing for a full-blown miracle and again we don't regret that and here's what happened I was on my way to the doctor's office and I heard God tell me treat the doctor's report like fiery darts so I knew I was going to get in there and hear something negative, but what do we do with fiery darts? We take up the shield of faith. So I went into that doctor's office and I shot down those doctors and I was not nice about it, you guys. They got a sermon from me and it was awkward, but they heard what I had to say and I let them know that I did not receive what they were saying. And then I had to stick with that. After every doctor report that I went to and all of the follow-up appointments, me and Johnny were consistent with Matthias is not going to die. He is going to live and declare the works of the Lord. And he's not going to be born with any health issues because God has promised us in his word that we don't have to put up with doctor's reports. And here's where I think I went wrong. Towards the end of um, the pregnancy, because we made it 32 weeks, I started out of my own mouth saying things like, I don't want to be pregnant. I meant again, <laughs> like I've been pregnant a lot. This needs to be the last one. I wasn't specific and the enemy comes to kill, still and destroy. Nobody else can do that. That wasn't God's doing. And all he needs is permission from us to move. And I gave him permission with my own words unwittingly. And I can in hindsight see that. And what makes me and Johnny able to stand strong on God's word and move forward is recognizing our own error in this and t taking it as a really painful learning curve and applying it and making the necessary adjustments in our life and then moving forward. And no, it hasn't been easy. I get on here and we seem really confident and we're bold with our faith, but that doesn't mean it was easy, you guys. It was rough to have to look myself in the mirror and look my husband in the eyes and say, you know what, I allowed this to happen. What the Lord has been speaking to me about is, is Isaiah verse 20, oh, chapter 26, verse 3, is that thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusteth in you. And that word mind literally means imagination. And the Hebrew definition figuratively means, or liter literally, means conception. So whatever you imagine, think upon, ponder, you are conceiving in your own heart and will in due time give birth to it if you continually think on it or water it. Like my own health. Mm. I used to have all kinds of pains. You know, I felt pains in my own sciatic nerve that I had damaged before. But I started seeing myself according to the word of God that we are healed by the stripes of Jesus and picturing myself in my own heart and seeing myself run, running on a track, doing things I could not do. And now those pains are gone and it's starting to manifest more and more in my life. I remember last year sometime Samuel had to go to the doctor to get tested for leukemia and I had to wait over a week for the report and it was the same thing. I had to be intentional about how I was going to rehearse the outcome, what I was going to do hearing the bad news and telling my family and preparing for the worst or meditating on the fact that Samuel's healed and no weapon formed against him shall prosper. And you know, it made all the difference. Samuel got a report back, which was healthy and 
there were a lot of things leading up to that that the doctor said, you know, yeah, I know we need to get these tests. Weird bruising, leg pains, um, high temperatures that just really pointed in one direction. And that was a scary time for us. But we went into it with the right mindset that we're going to stand on God's word and we're going to speak nothing but God's word. And we had victory in that. And then when I was pregnant with Skye, we also had the blood work done, the genetic testing. And they called and told me that she was going to have Down syndrome. And you know what, you guys, I refused to accept that as well. And she was not born with Down syndrome. So when it came to Matthias, it was kind of like, I think the weariness, like the Bible says, don't grow weary while doing good for a reason, because there's a tendency for us to grow weary and get tired. And the devil was taking some freaking cheap shots, you guys, below the belt. And it caught up to me. And I, I didn't stand my ground in the very end. And it cost us dearly. And you know what? Like I said, it was a very painful lesson learned. But because we're still so confident in God's word and we're not wavering on that, we are able to... Like the word says to get back on your feet and keep going. And that's what we've intended to do. And as long as we continue to be intentional about that, we're going to be okay. We are going to be okay. And you know what? I don't think when 2020 ends, the enemy's going to stop attacking us, you guys. So it's really important to stay grounded in the truths of God's word. And um, that's what I really want you guys to take away from us and the encouragement that you guys have gotten in the past. That's that's how we achieve that. That That is how we can get on camera and put our personal business on public and let you guys know like, hey, we're okay. This is why we're okay. Because no matter what, God's word, the word is absolute truth and it is the final authority in our life. And when we don't see the fruit of that, we examine ourselves and figure out why and we make the adjustments. And it's hard, but it's doable. If it wasn't doable, it wouldn't be.